This is the Louis T. Network. Hey, either you're outside or you're in the lab room. Who else could it be for me? Your name. Louis T, welcome. You are in the lab room. Of course, I am your host, Luke. Thank you for joining me. Week number 13 in the National Football League, Denver Broncos at Arrowhead taking on the Kansas City. Kansas City Chiefs in a huge AFC West matchup. Hey, look, a lot on the line here as Kansas City coming off that ugly defeat on Thursday Night Football a week ago to the Oakland Raiders can jump back into the mix in this division with a win here. You'll knot it up at 8-4 and four a piece across the board as the Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Broncos will all be 8-4 and four in the season. And all, will, all bets will be off at that point if you can get a win here. So you'll shake things up in a major way. If you can get a win if you're Kansas City for Denver, it's simple. You're not only looking to reign supreme over the AFC West, but you want that number one spot in the AFC. It matters. You don't want to go to Foxborough for the AFC Championship game if you make it there. You don't want to have to go to find Tom Brady and company at Foxborough and get a win. You don't want to do that. You've been there already this year. It didn't end well for you. So... If you can, the only way you can control your own destiny is by winning. You can't worry about what the Patriots are doing. All you can do is hold up your end of the bargain. And winning is the only way that you'll find a way to get that number one seed. And so it starts here in this game against Cairns, a city on the road. So this is a huge one right here. Sunday Night Football doesn't get much bigger than this for this division. So Chiefs come out three straight passes. They go three and out. And then Denver proceeds to go eight plays, 74 yards, capped by a double eight to Marius Thomas, 24-yard touchdown, seven up in Denver. And I thought that was the worst possible start that Kansas City could get off to because, first of all, you need to stick to your identity. You're a run-dominant football team, and you allow dun 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 captain, check down, Alex Smith, to, to do the rest, to clean up the table scraps and by coming out first play of the game matter of fact it was like a 40 yard pass to Donnie Avery that's not who you are <laughs> I mean they, they kept chronicling and documenting that Alex Smith doesn't throw the football down the field and that he has the fewest passing attempts you know 20 yards past the line of scrimmage in the league and they showed the league average and he's only got three percent of his passes yada 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 look we all know this you don't have to bang it into our brains. We understand what this Chiefs team is, and it works. It works for them. So for them to come out and try to establish something totally different than what they are, I thought that was Andy Reid being cute. I thought they were going away from what works, and they had to pay for it. So now it's 7 nothing early in this game. Broncos follow up that drive that got them in the end zone with a 10-play 48-yard touchdown drive, this time ending with a 14-yard C.J. Anderson touchdown catch. After Isaiah Burst got a solid punt return to set up that drive. Again, 48 yards, not that far to go. And so now it's 14 to nothing. And the, the Chiefs, they continue to go three and out. They struggle early on as we end the first quarter. They've got negative 10 yards of offense total in this game. They're struggling right now. So you can see, and, and the, the, the worst part of it was, the Denver Broncos were having a two-way goal of it. They were running the football. And I think the Broncos are now trying to instill a, it's much like the Patriots have been doing over the last month of football or so, trying to instill in their football team this dog mentality, this run mentality as well. Look, we all know Brady and Manning can throw it with the best of them, but you also need to be able to be grounded as well. You also need to be able to run the football. And when it gets cold, and you don't know what the conditions are going to be when you play in January. It might be, you know, so windy that passes can't be completed. And it might be snowing out. You, you need to be able to run the football. And so you saw Brady and company get it done in Indy on the ground. You saw the Denver Broncos do it a week ago against Middles, uh, Miami at home. They did it again here against Kansas City. And I like C.J. I actually like C.J. Anderson better 
than Ronnie Hillman and better than their other running back that is injured currently. So I think that he gives them a dimension of, of power. And he's not the fastest guy in the world, but he, he's fast enough to get the job done. But he breaks a lot of tackles. If you look at his yards after initial contact, this guy runs through arm tackles. He's, he runs with a nice center of gravity, great balance, gets every single yard that's there and then some. I like C.J. Anderson a lot. Reminds me a lot of another Anderson that played for this Denver Broncos team in Mike Anderson. I think he's a better version of Mike Anderson. And so he's the guy that I think when everybody else comes back, that this team is still going to want to give him the football. And I think he deserves to have some opportunities because he, he to me, is the best of all the backs that they currently have. And I'd like to see him touch the football some more. It's 14 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. After Kansas City is pinned at the nine-yard line with a great special teams played by Omar Bolden, Bubba Caldwell is flagged for running out of bounds. No, you can't do that. You can't run out of bounds as a gunner willingly on your own and use the sidelines because you know the blockers can't block you out of bounds. You can't run out of bounds and stay out of bounds. If you go out of bounds, you got to come right back in. He didn't. So that negates that beautiful play that they had by Omar Bolden down in the football at the nine-yard line. They, I think they smashed the Anthony Thomas on that play. Either way, the Broncos said, okay, fine. We got a little penalty. They faked the punt on, on the do-over. Chiefs said, hey, we want better field position. You guys go ahead and punt that over again. Broncos fake the punt, and they convert on a huge pickup. And then after that, they have a chance to bust this game wide open. This game is over if they get a touchdown here. I mean, they move it down the field, and they have a chance to really bust this game wide open. Jacob Tammy misses an opportunity to catch the football in the end zone. Double eight, Demarius Thomas lets one go through his fingers as well. And so they got to settle for a field goal. It's 17 to nothing. If either one of those guys comes down with the football and make it 21, we know Kansas City is damn near allergic to scoring 21 points. And so on a night like this where they've struggled to just get a first down, this Denver Broncos defense is pretty good. Don't see them scoring, you know, 25, you know, 30 points in this game and come back and win. So 21 would have been a huge burden to put on them. But 17 is still manageable. And so you need to start doing something if you're Kansas City in this football game. Chiefs get a desperately needed touchdown as they march down the field. Alex Smith starts to get busy. He starts to get into a rhythm. And he has a big completion to a couple of tight ends. One to Travis Kelsey to set up the touchdown to Anthony Fasano in the end zone. And so that was a huge possession. They went for it on fourth and one. Jamal Charles gets a first down. So they, they pulled out all the stops on that possession. They had to, down 17 to nothing. It's now 17 to seven. Peyton Manning leads the Broncos on a field goal drive right before the half to make it 20 to seven. That's your halftime score. You come out of the break, Broncos get the football first. Justin Houston strikes. Strip, sack, forced fumble of Peyton Manning. Gives the Chiefs the football in prime field position to score a touchdown. What do they do? They settle for a field goal. Again, you're playing against the big boys. You need touchdowns. Field goals don't win games. Touchdowns do. You know the mantra. You know the motto. It's now 20 to 10. Broncos add a couple of field goals. One off of a muff punt. You're running down to cover a punt. And the ball hits off of Marcus Cooper's leg. And you know, you hear guys all the time screaming, Peter, 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 which means get away from the football. He had no clue where the ball was. It was a bad punt, first of all, by Colquitt. So he had no clue where the football was. It caroms off of his knee. Again, Omar Bolden had an excellent night on special teams, recovers that, that fumble and gives the Broncos an opportunity to kick another field goal. So all of a sudden now it's 26 to 10 as we head to the fourth quarter. Check out these numbers. These are some humongous disparities right here. Broncos go into the fourth quarter having run 63 offensive plays for 310 yards. Meanwhile, the Chiefs go into the fourth quarter having only run 24 plays for 66 yards. Doesn't get much worse than that. I mean, that right there to me tells the story of this game. And I thought the tone was set by that first possession by the Chiefs. Three passes, it's three and out. That's not who you are. I didn't think Jamal and Charles touched the football. Never, ever trust a man with two first names. I didn't think he touched the ball nearly enough in this game. I think he only had 10 rushes. 
He didn't touch it in the, in the receiving game enough. I didn't think he touched the football. And, and again, we've seen this. Earlier in the season when the Chiefs were struggling, he wasn't getting the football enough. They start winning. Guess where the common denominator is? He's the catalyst for the success of this team. Didn't think he got enough opportunities to make things happen in this game. And so, Chiefs put together their best drive of the game. Jamal Charles scores on a receiving touchdown. They fail on the two-point conversion. Alex Smith takes a shot on that possession by Von Miller flag for a personal foul penalty to help set up the touchdown. So it's 26 to 16. Huge Emmanuel Sanders first down on the next possession. If they could have gotten a stop, they could have had a shot. But that first down allowed the Denver Broncos to not only get a field goal to extend the lead out to 29 to 16, but it also allowed them to eat up about six minutes of the fourth quarter clock. Then Donnie Avery fumbles the football on the next possession just for good measure to seal it up as the Denver Broncos go into Arrowhead and come out with a 29-16 victory. I think the thing that was the most impressive here was the running game. They didn't rely on Peyton Manning's right arm a lot in this game. When they needed it, it was there. But for the most part, the ground game got it done for the Denver Broncos, and that was very impressive. To see them dominate the line of scrimmage the way that they did on both sides of the football was impressive. That's something we need to see from Denver a little bit more often because, again, we saw what happened to them in the Super Bowl last year. They need to be a much more physical football team, and we saw that in this game. Broncos improved to 9-3. Chiefs, they fall into a nasty five-way tie with four other teams in the AFC at 7-5. I think there's about five or six teams nodding up at 7-5. and five. The Dolphins on Monday Night Football have a chance to add their name to that discussion at 7-5 and five as well. So it's getting muddled in the AFC wild card picture. And so that's a tough loss for the Chiefs. Huge win for the Broncos. That's how you do it if you are the Denver Broncos handling a little bit of AFC West family business. That's going to do it for Denver Chiefs. I thank you for joining me. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab. We'll come back because I've got plenty more games to break down in week number 13 in the National Football League. See you in a bit. <laughs>